Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Sell More Book Show, episode 516. I'm Brian Cohen from Best Page Forward, joined by Ella Barnard from Author Like a Boss. Ella, I'm glad you're back. We we had a lot of fun talking about all sorts of stuff last week. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Loving oh, it. Good. Good. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love glad it. Glad to be here. Yay. Oh, good. We're dancing. <laughs> um, you can't see it, but on the video, it's, we're shimmying our shoulders. Oh, yeah. Shimmy, shimmy. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So something we talked about off the air, um, you haven't been doing as much coaching because you've been focusing a little bit more on your writing, uh, on your joy, on your not mm-hmm. doing five businesses at the same time, like yes. uh, some people, like myself. <laughs> um, what? What? Do you think, you know, if an author out there is feeling like they're wearing too many hats and they are doing too many different things, like how did you come to your decision to to scale a few things back? Yeah, um, like for myself and for I think a lot of authors, like I think it's common to get this kind of like shiny object syndrome and want hmm. to just start a bunch of new things. Like you're like, that yeah. looks cool. I want to try that or or to see that like something's working for somebody else and you want to start trying that. And um, and so I've done that before. <laughs> and uh-huh. and um, I also find that like a lot of us are really good at doing a lot of things like we're good. Like we know we could do the things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we are capable of those things. Like I am capable. Like I have the capability to do the social media and to do like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. And like we have the capability of doing all the things like if we sat down, but we don't like necessarily have the time or energy to do all the things. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. because we are capable of, of doing them, we're like, you know, I should do it. Like there's like this combo of the shiny object, the seeing what other people are doing that's work. Plus knowing our capability makes us want to do all the things. And I have that same problem. <laughs> and yeah. um, so I recently was like, but let me go down. To, like I'm exhausted. <laughs> you know, I'm exhausted mm-hmm. and I'm not enjoying myself. So like, what can I do to go down to the fundamentals? <laughs> like, what are my, I, and I kind of go back to that. I'll probably say that a few times. Like, what are the fundamental things that I enjoy and that produce results? And yeah. let me like put some blinders on for not going mm. on social media for a while <laughs> and focus on those. So that's, that's, and so that ended up with me like being like, I want to write romances with dragons and magic. And that sounds yeah. really fun to me. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds fun to, yeah. to me too. And, and so. I love that. And I love that idea of going back to the fundamentals. And you talked last week about energy mm-hmm. and energy drain. And sometimes you just got to listen to that energy. Mm-hmm. Yep. I do I journaling too. Journaling. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm like, uh-huh. It helps me to like, if I, if you have a lot of thoughts in your, I have a lot of thoughts in my head that are just bouncing around. Yeah, I can get them out and on paper and it kind of like lets them go and then get down to like the core of like what's really going on. So, Oh, that's great. Great advice. Yeah. I'm sure some yeah. folks will definitely take that on. I'm glad you're here once again. Yeah, and, thank you. Um, sure. And so definitely everyone go check out authorlikeaboss.com. Join the email list. Mm-hmm. Uh, some great tips there that I noticed you, you're giving away there. So definitely. Thank you. Go check it out, of course, yeah. of course. A um, little bit of housekeeping on my end. Self-publishing live 2024 in October with Becca Syme and Claire Taylor and Naomi Nakashima and Jen LaSalle, as well as myself. We, uh, as of a week ago, we had 18 tickets left. I have no idea how much we have now mm-hmm. because we're living in the future, but... Uh, <laughs> But there aren't that many left. So if you do want to join me in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, come on down. We'll be there. Uh, There's also virtual tickets if you don't want to join us, but you do want to hear the stuff. Selfpublishinglive.com. Awesome. So this is a great great segue from talking about energies. 
A previous week's question was, what refills your well these days? What books and movies and music and TV? Logan Russell said, quote, I've been allowing myself to be a release day gamer. I'll occasionally buy into the hype of a new video game, uh, most recently Starfield and Pal World, and block off my schedule to play on the release day. I let myself binge it as much as I want, but after a day or two, I'm ready to get back to productive things. I really like that uh, Mm -hmm. there, Logan. Bethany's comment over to you, Ella. Yes, Bethany Tucker said, Gym time with Within Temptation, Gothic, Symphonic Music, Mandarin Companion Readers, my second language reading, Stardew Valley, a video game. Anyone else playing Stardew? I find (laughs) it a good palate cleanser between writing sprints. Oh, that's fun. I like Mm -hmm. that, Bethany. And Matt Whitaker said, podcasts on the train ride to work. I've definitely done that. Reels or shorts to relax a bit and goofy movies. I hear you on uh, the reels to shorts as well. I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of going through some, some YouTube shorts and it's just, <laughs> they're little, they're little goofy snippets. So those are mm-hmm. fun. Uh, what refills your well, Ella? Right now, I think I mentioned last week that I've been getting into anime. My brother introduced me into anime. Nice. <laughs> it's been a little bit, there's like, it was kind of like when I first started TikTok, where for like a week there was like a di- deep dive. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I really like it because the episodes are usually about 20 minutes long. And so it's mm-hmm. not a huge investment. Like it's like a little, a little dabble. Like it's like, oh, yeah. I can do this little investment, a little break. And then um, I also, I also just lay down on my couch and close my eyes, not like a nap, but just like, you know, for 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes, yeah. just like rest my brain. That, That's awesome. That refills my well. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I I personally have been doing a little bit of video gaming. Hadn't let myself in a while, but uh, it actually sometimes gives me a nice little boost to, to get into the next thing. So. I like the video games because they're a combination of like, like, like receiving like yeah creativity while still yeah. interacting creative like tv shows are like you're like on the receiving end passive of the TV yeah 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 the passive but like the video games you're interactive in it um mm. and and uh and i also like the video games that have good s- stories because then i yes. then i get ideas too oh yeah you know um i don't play a lot of video games but i've been watching my brother like like he's i used to i used to watch to me and we hang out and we chit chat about like and so starfield i've watched him play all of starfield and i watched him start playing pal world um he hasn't (laughs) played stardew valley but i myself have played stardew valley (laughs) nice yeah so we don't talk about this stuff enough on the show but we need to recharge we need to let ourselves (laughs) have a little fun so yeah this is awesome. You can answer the question of the week in the future on sellmorebookshow.com or in the Sell More Book Show after party Facebook group. And we may read your answer on the show. Uh, Ella, we're doing it. We are going to do our top story of the week. Are you ready? I'm ready. Top story. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Whoop, whoop. Prove yourself. If you saw authors and marketers panicking about email in january yelling something about yelling about something called dmark uh didn't understand what was happening yet did nothing well don't panic you're probably still okay but only for a bit longer reports davy winder on forbes.com quote starting in april senders of unwanted mass emails to gmail users will begin to see message rejections increasing unless they abide by new gmail email sender guidelines end quote In case you missed the email news in January, both Gmail and Yahoo announced plans to tighten up their email spam filtering in February, hoping to reduce spam to their users' inboxes. Their changes don't affect individual emails that you send and are less likely to affect you if your list is small. But if there's any chance you might one day send 5,000 emails in a single day, put this on your to-do list. In order to show Gmail and Yahoo you're not a spammer, you will be required to add some proof to your domain via a system called DMARC, which confirms you are who you say you are. 
It's not hard, but it is confusing. And one benefit of procrastinating on this is having author friends who've already done it. According to <laughs> Forbes, Google will soon start rejecting a percentage of non-compliant email traffic, gradually increasing the rejection rate over time. Quote, this slow and steady approach appears to have already started with temporary errors on a small percentage of their non-compliant email traffic coming into play this month, writes Winder. So get started as soon as possible. And while you're in your email provider's dashboard, if you have a multi-step unsubscribe, if you still have a multi-step unsubscribe designed to make it hard to leave, turn that off. Google says you have until June 1st to implement one-click unsubscribe in all commercial promotional emails. Ella, mm -hmm. we, you talked about last week uh, how... For six-figure authors, it kind of comes back to email, right? And mm -hmm. and bring they bring six-figure authors tend to bring things back to their email because they own it rather mm -hmm. than social media. And so here we are. We're even before the hot potatoes of wisdom here. We're we're saying we've got to do something about our email. Have you done the DMARC stuff? Yep. Uh, <laughs> and awesome. Uh, what tips do you have for folks who are trying to figure this whole thing out? Yeah. So, um, like I've, I made my own websites for a little while on WordPress. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah, have yeah. a, like a little bit of info, like, um, like I checked into it. I looked into it. Like I use convert kit. And so they have like a simple yep. kind of bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah. except for that I host my my URLs, I purchased my URLs somewhere else than I host them. So it didn't just move mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So I had to go into the C panel and add the 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 things. But I yeah. but I did make I did make some videos of myself doing that. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know if you want me to or not, because I was like, oh, I have people that I that I know that are probably confused about this. And so I recorded myself doing it for a few of for for like my email and then adding it to the C panel and then. Yeah. And then updating my email. So I don't know if you're interested, but I can always just send you the links to those videos if you want. Absolutely. No, I mean, <laughs> I am sure that there are listeners here. <laughs> who have no idea what to do when it comes to this. Yeah. And so, yeah, feel free. Uh, we could post it in the after party group. Okay. I am cool with that because, yeah. you know, the more help, the better. Yeah, because it is a little bit confusing, but I, yeah, So, but I did do it myself. I mean, it took me a little bit, especially I have uh, under my one pen name, I have like, I wrote, write short romances. And so I had 50, like 50 50 books and like probably 30 of them or more had bonus epilogues, which meant like I had to go through every single automation, <laughs> like every oh, single no. automation and be like, change, make sure that you are from coming from the right email address. So, I mean, it was a couple, it was a couple day project, but now everything's good. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Now you got me thinking, I'm like, I know I route through something, so I better double check because I, yeah. I did it too. Um, and I have a web person who who I pay on a retainer, mm -hmm. uh, Nate Hofelder, who who has pr provided stories for this show in the past uh, from his great uh, blog, The Digital Reader. I hire him on a retainer to just like, can you please take care of this weird thing I'm seeing mm -hmm. on Facebook uh, with the DMARC? And he's like, oh, you're already good. You were already good before. Nice. And so that's all. Nice. Cool. I was ahead of the curve, Ella. <laughs> yeah. I was ahead of the curve. Awesome. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I kind of asked you this question already, but do, what, what are your thoughts on getting uh, outside help? Do you feel like Oh yeah. sometimes it's yes. just worth it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. I definitely think like if, if like I'm a little bit tech savvy, not like not hugely tech savvy, but a little bit yeah. enough that I feel comfortable, like, like with a tutorial beside like in the other tab being like, I can do this, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I absolutely am a proponent of getting help. If that's yeah. what works, like if that makes your life a little bit easier, you don't have to be the one, you don't have to be the expert on everything. <laughs> it's okay. Oh man. Can <laughs> we like get that on the wall somewhere? Cause yeah. that is, 
Yeah, you don't have to be the expert on everything. This is 100% yeah. true. Yeah. I love that. I love that. All right, so you got a question for me. I have a question me. for you. Yeah, I do. I'm ready. So I'm ready. how do you feel about one-click unsubscribe and making it easier to leave your email list? I feel great about one click unsubscribe because if someone unsubscribes from your list, they're not your person. They're not necessarily going to buy your books. They're not necessarily going to be your kind of arc readers. They are not your person. And it's better for them to leave earlier so that you can focus your attention on the people who are your people. So if you get more unsubscribes, do not worry because in the long run, it will improve the health of your email. You'll actually get to more people uh, of, of the people who are subscribed and you will just make sure that you're not wasting time on people who are not going to buy your books. I felt exactly the same way when I saw this. I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. No problems yeah. here. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to make it easy for people because one, that's now the the law of the land coming <laughs> June 1st. Um <laughs> But two, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's just the smart business thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It works. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ella, we need another lightning sound. I do not care if it's the same one. Well, I mean, I thought about it now. So now the okay, lightning now. sound is meow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's your brand. It's my brand. You were saying the cat's your brand. <laughs> so that's meow. perfect. <laughs> meow. Yeah. So this is this is a very cat like lightning. You need an emoji with a cat like shooting lightning out of their head yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, in the lightning meow, um, <laughs> we've got uh, a question for you here, yeah. Ella. So changes like the new DMARC rule seem to make it harder on people running small businesses like authors. How can we deal with internet changes over time? and still run a successful business. Yeah. Okay. So I have a couple of thoughts about this. Um, okay. One thing, like a practical thing is uh, like, cause I pay So I pay attention to bills and laws that are trying to be passed, especially related yeah. to internet and privacy and this kind of stuff, because, because it tends to be that large uh, corporations and businesses are trying to, like Comcast or whatever are trying to make it themselves more money and less money for, for like which right. then makes it harder for p small businesses so I usually I have like set I've set up notifications from Google like Google News and Google so that I get an email <laughs> yeah well and like from my representatives so that I get emails about what things are coming up so that I can then reach out and contact my representatives because it actually does make a difference. Um, yeah. Not that many people do reach out. So then when they have somebody who cares enough to call, um, it does right. make a difference. Um, Cause when you call, you're like more than one person, you're like a representation of a bulk of people in there. Yeah. It's like the Nielsen box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I do that. Um, and cause that's like one of the things that we can do. And then, um, and then I also like anticipate that there's going to be things that happen. Like there's going to be little mm -hmm. changes like this that just happen as part of a business owner, like as somebody running a business over a length of time. Like if I was like, oh, I'm going to run this business for a year, then maybe I wouldn't expect to have this kind of stuff come up. But but I don't want to just run it for a year. I want to run it for a while. <laughs> like I plan on running it long term. And so I anticipate that there will be little things and changes that that have to happen. And um and because yeah. I anticipate that these things will like I don't know when they're going to happen, but I know that they probably will. And so it's just a matter of doing what you have to do. Like an example that I thought of before <laughs> was like if you're going to Costco on the weekend, you know, it's going to be busy. Like you don't get disappointed yes. about it. Like you might be annoyed by it, but you have to know ahead of time that it's going to be busy and you set your expectations accordingly. <laughs> you know, you're like, I know it's going to be busy. So let me set my expectations for that. Um, in the same way, I 
have my expectations for running a business to be like there are going to be little things like this that come up, whether it's a law is changing or whether the social media algorithms are different or something like like I build that into my mindset ahead of time. So that way it, I don't get so disappointed or bitter. I'm just like, oh, this is just another thing to deal with. Yeah. Oh, man. You're <laughs> dropping some knowledge bombs, some wisdom <laughs> bombs here, Ella. I love this. Yeah. Uh, particularly just you have to expect that yeah. things will change. Yeah. And by, by, like I want to like, like pay attention to the bills and laws because that does. It, I don't like feeling like a victim to other people's like other people's agendas you know so it's like there are if it's if you don't want to set your google alert find a tiktoker or youtuber or somebody who regularly does updates or a a podcast that regularly does updates about these kind of things that you can then you know that you can pay attention and keep informed so that you can make a difference when it counts and be proactive and you know for yourself yeah I love that. I yeah. think that was a great tip too. I just can't just say every single tip of yours is a great tip or we'll be here for six hours. Cause I'll yeah. just be like, wow, that was good too. And I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. But, uh, those were yeah. all good. Thanks. So, thank okay. You. I've got a question for you. Oh my goodness. I'm ready. Now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what bad habit have you broken? That's allowed you to be more successful author. So I think one of the bad habits that I have, broken is the endless to-do list. So I used to always have just, okay, well, I have 12 things to do. So I'm putting 12 things on my to-do list. And one of the things I have changed is now there are six spots. When the six spots are filled, I just have to move things to the next day because I can't fit more than six things. And that has changed my life in so many ways. One of the ways is I just feel so much more fulfilled that some days I actually do all the things that I set out to do, which as a high achiever uh, was something that I craved, but could never do when I had 12 or 18 or 20 something things on my to-do list, just having restrictions Uh, Mm -hmm. And I've heard even just within the last week, restrictions are the key to creativity and restrictions are the key to a whole bunch of things. So Mm -hmm. having restrictions in what you're even allowed to do uh, has really helped me. And I think in the long run, I have gotten more done. Nice. Yeah. Finding things, finding ways to be more productive and feel good about it is magic. (laughs) Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Poof. Agreed. So, Ella, there's a, there's a book out there called Success is an Inside Job. So according to that author, Lee Miltier, success is an inside job. What does this quote mean to you? Mm-hmm. So I so I thought about this like while I was driving to go get my my, my medications. I was like, uh-huh, think about uh-huh. success as an inside job. What does it mean? Um. So I was really thinking about it a bit and, and I've thought about success before. And so it took me a while to realize that like my version of success, like how I define success, because it's such a, like, it's so different from person to person. Oh yeah. But I think like for most people, if you were to really break it all the way down, it would success at its core would be some version of spending more time with the people that you love doing enjoyable things. And making happy memories. Like, and that when we set goals, it's usually we set the goals to achieve what we think will get us that, that outcome of like spending time doing things that we enjoy with the people that we love in our lives. (laughs) Like, and so money is like oftentimes the answer that we know we're like more money would be the answer for me to be able to spend more time doing enjoyable things with the people I love. Um, Or so we think. Or so we (laughs) think, right? That's usually like whatever goal that we have is usually to ultimately get that outcome. Yeah. And, um, and interestingly, like I came up with that definition of success for myself. Like I want to spend most of my life doing things I enjoy with people I enjoy and love 
you know, <laughs> like that's, I came that yeah. after some journaling. But if you look at this book that, like, I, I brought the <laughs> book in because she, like, the subtitle is How to Stop Spending Time You Don't Have with People You Don't Like Doing Things You Don't Want to Do. Is the opposite, the opposite would be yeah. how to spend, how to have more time doing things that you want to do with people you like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe the people with, you know, it, maybe you do things that you want to do alone and or with people that you like, but like, I think that's success. And so then if you look at that definition of success that I've just said with like, doing things that you like with people you enjoy. Um, and then you kind of combine it, combine it. Like if you were to track your time, as we talked about earlier, yeah, um, you could spend less time doing the things that you don't enjoy with the people that you don't. <laughs> and yeah. right now spend more time doing things that you love with the people that you love without having to spend a ton of money necessarily or without having to reach those goals <laughs> that we yeah. set that we think will get us that success um and so i don't know if that quite answers like what you mean is success is an inside job because it's a lot about like what the definition of success is um oh, sure for me but i think I and I I do want to say that I think the more time we spend in our lives doing what we love with the people that we enjoy I do think and the more that we acknowledge that we have that time and the more emphasis yeah. we put on that I do think cuz I'm a woo woo person <laughs> that <laughs> that that will bring more success. Yeah. <laughs> So well, I mean, if I had to add one, it, I am right there with you. Okay, I think the only thing I would personally add to it is just saying, and your mindset and your focus on your definition of success is your choice. You get to choose it. It's yeah. not the world. Yes, that's the only thing I would add. Yeah, I think because you're, yeah. I'm a hundred percent right with you. Yeah, I mean, I had this assumption that the, what what success core's definition is, but I think it's not a terrible one that people would like to be enjoying themselves in their, <laughs> their lives. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh yeah, but yeah, but that should be defined by individuals. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, it makes me think that should be our question of the week. But we can get to that. Okay, we can okay, get to that. I have a question for um, you. Meow. Yes. Meow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How has the value of an author brand changed since self-publishing started? How has it become more or less important? Oh, my goodness. So having a self-publishing brand has become infinitely more important because in the beginning, and not all of you were here back in 2010 when I published my first self-published book, but it was pretty ugly. And uh, it had no cohesive branding whatsoever, and it did fine. I could not release the same book now, 14 years later, and have it do as well because branding is more important because how the book is perceived from the cover and the blurb is important. The contents of that book are important. The contents on that email list and how it comes across are important. Branding has definitely become a whole lot more important. And as uh, you brought up, Ella, earlier, just having that focus on improving your brand can make a big difference if you are, uh, I think you brought it up last week, willingness to update your brand mm -hmm. based on reader expectations is one of the pillars of six-figure success. And so I, I think that it's definitely become even more important over time. And you may have to continue to adapt it based mm -hmm. certainly on what you said, Ella. Yes, I agree with you 100%. I think branding is really, really important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like if I were to say like, what am I good at? It's helping people find a brand and make it. And so, like, I love, I love talking about branding, but um, because I think, I love authors thinking about readers 
and the business building as like a co-creative experience like yeah authors write we write by ourselves but you don't but the the act like it's an art and art the 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 aspect of art happens when people read it and then they have their own experience of what you've written (laughs) and having that in mind from the get-go of like what is the experience that the reader is having because they are part of this art you know that so anyway yes um and thinking about them through every part of the process i think is important yeah absolutely agreed absolutely so last question ella on this meow lightning meow um is what do you think it means to you to author like a boss um i it's like it's changed some like yeah it's changed some but i've talked to or i recently talked to some of the people that i coach um because for a little while i was like doesn't it sound kind of bro like grinding oh, like a boss bro. and they were like <laughs> no and i was like oh okay what do you think it means and they were like and they and it kind of changed how i thought about it which is basically having like taking responsibility and having confidence and auto- in yourself as an author like mm-hmm. and and so i realized that one of the things that i do when i am coaching <laughs> is and one of the things that i love about coaching and helping authors is helping them find that confidence in themselves especially when it comes to marketing cuz that's when that's where a lot of authors feel um self you know don't lack confidence and right and so i love um helping them to like see when they when they finally realized oh i can do this and it's not because they didn't know what to do it's because they have the confidence in themselves and their knowledge and their expertise and so i feel like that's what it means to author like a boss i love it that's awesome yeah well uh this has been a great lightning round (laughs) very exciting stuff ella are you with me on this idea of the question of the week what is your definition of success? Oh, Just yes. simple. Yes. Awesome. Good. Because I want people to define that. Mm-hmm. You inspired this. So um, <laughs> you're cool with it? Yeah, I love that. I love that. And it's not necessarily awesome. an easy question. So. <laughs> oh, no, no. You're you're no, not joking around there for yeah. sure. For sure. I'd yeah. have to think about it myself too. But yeah. um, you can answer this difficult, but helpful question of the week over at sellmorebookshow.com or in the Sell More Book Show After Party Facebook group. Ella, it has been a wonderful two weeks spending with yeah. you here. Thank you. Uh, sure. Where can people find you and uh, and hear some of your backlist and, and all mm-hmm. that good stuff? Okay. So I'm at authorlikeaboss.com. Um, my podcast, you know, access to my podcast, uh, the place that I, it's all there. I also, mostly I'm spending time on my newsletter on and Substack. So the best place mm-hmm. to find me like currently producing author coachy kind of content is, will be go to author like a boss and join the newsletter. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. I love it. Awesome. Well, definitely go check out author like a boss.com as a reminder. Uh, only about 18 or fewer tickets left of self-publishing live in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina in October. So go check it out at selfpublishinglive.com. We'll have another new mystery host next week. Uh, <laughs> and so stay tuned. But uh, Ella, it has been a delight. Uh, thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. All right. Well. For Ella, I'm Brian. Have a great week of book selling, everybody. And we will talk to you next week for episode 517. So have a great week of book selling. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.